Hey YouTube, welcome. This is Top Deck King. We are back with another deck tech. This time we have a deck for best of three. It is a take on the Is It Snow deck, but a little bit different. We are utilizing taking extra turns here a lot more than the original deck, as well as playing Thrax, the Sudden Storm for the ability of making gold spend cheaper as well as making these uncounterable so it's a spicy little little nugget here we want to do but the the deck is churns pretty much because we're taking five extra churns per se here so and i like discontinuity the reason why i didn't do four of these and say like you know discontinuity is because i like the fact that i can play this during my opponent's turn and end their turn right away obviously i mean it does kind of the same thing in a sense that you're going to take the extra turn but being able to end say be aggressive and then end your opponent's turn is pretty amazing and if you don't draw this early in the game anyways it's not going to be a six mana spell it's going to be a seven mana spell whereas this is a six mana spell regardless and on top of that, it ends the stack. So whatever they play ends the stack. So, but yeah, this is a little spicy little nugget. So let's, I don't know, we'll see if it works, but let's get into the deck tech real quick. So uh, our removal package here is four frost bites for the early game. Since we're a snow deck, this is an easy put into the deck for the snow package. You just minimum two, if not more. Our draw spells technically are iteration and maze my tome here only so two and two i'm not really sold on iteration yet but i mean in a two color deck iteration is still a very solid deck so i don't see why i wouldn't be running this right now so we're going to keep it at a two two and see what happens i have one opus here for the reason also because of thrax the storm guy because worst case scenario we can cycle or discard this and create a treasure but if we get Thrax in play, in, this will cost seven mana. And, you know, we already played five with this. So having access to, let's say, if we played Prismari and then into a Thrax, then we should be able to do this on turn six. So we're going to do a one of and see how that works. Our counter magic here is split uh, three Lofty Denials, two Disputes, and two Solid Comings. The Lofty because, well, you have three Brazen, you have two uh, Prismari Dragons, uh, three Storm Dragon, or I don't even think this is a Dragon, it's a Giant. Three Storm Giants and four Gold Spans. So we have enough Flyers on top of that. If you play Our Runs Epiphany, it creates a Flyer. So it we have a lot of Flyers, in other words. So it's usually going to be a four mana counter spell. Two mystical disputes in order to catch something early against opponents. Say like a, if we play against rogues or something, we could do like a one mana counter spell. Two solid comings. The reason why I only have two in here, uh, I know a lot of the uh, is it snow decks or whatever you want. They're playing this as a like a three or four of because you could just foretell it, cast gold span, attack, and then use it. But I mean, I'm going to give it as a two of just to see how it works. If Mystical Dispute ends up being not great here, I can easily say move this up to three and maybe put another like Maze Mind Tome or something in or maybe another Brazen Borrower, but we'll see. Well, we're trying it out as a two. Um, two Brazen Borrowers. I wanted to do three, but I didn't have room for the third one because I still wanted some of this other stuff. I wanted this to try this out, so I'm trying it as a two. But if cards like... Uh, opus doesn't work or like I said dispute doesn't work you can move that to three and you can move this to three so two brazens three bone crusher this is another kind of I guess this technically falls in this line another removal it's pretty much a removal spell um, our dragon package slash flyers whatever is two prismari dragons two sudden storms and four gold span dragons that's our like finisher kind of thing our dragon package or flying stuff whatnot and i like the fact that sudden storm has flash i mean it has this legendary which is not obviously good but the cool thing about this is when let's say you're playing against the mirror match right they're gonna tap out on turn five to try to you know play this guy attack um prior to caught prior to the trigger of the treasure bee token being um coming into play you know activating coming into play you could flash this guy in and you could block the gold span dragon and just eat it so that's a plus sign you have to make sure to do it before the treasure comes into play otherwise if they have this card foretold then they could just counter it because this guy is still counterable it's everything after him 
a five cost or higher that's not uncounterable and obviously four gold spans where is it and then here comes uh, the churns package three outruns epiphanies and two discontinuities like i said they each have their own abilities that is good for itself but like i said uh I like discontinuity because I, I want to try ending their turn. I could like I could put an upkeep stop on their draw phase before they draw end the turn right there if I wanted to. Let them play a card and the turn on the stack of the card and it removes everything. So the card they played, they didn't lose it. They don't get any of the effects and it ends the turn. So that's why I'm running discontinuity as a two of. And then Alrun's Epiphany, obviously it's Alrun's Epiphany. You know what I mean? There's I mean there's nothing really to say about that. Nothing special about the lands here, you know, it's for, you know, just snow lands and then this. I'm not running the land that um, it's like the, the snarl, the, the blue red snarl check land, because there are times where you draw it and you don't have a, you know, island or a mountain in your hand. So it comes in tap regardless. So I'm not doing that. Obviously, you could run it and it could fix your mana better. But like I said, there are times where you're going to draw the snarl and then it just doesn't work. Um, and in the sideboard, it's kind of a lot of three ofs and two ofs. Um, I will go into the sideboard guide, so stay tuned uh, to the end of the video. Uh, I will go into the sideboard guide. I will explain why I put what I put in the sideboard guide, and I will give you advice on how I sideboard against the top meta decks. So not only will I tell you why I'm, it's in the sideboard, I will also give you a sideboard guide. So when you play against certain matchups, you'll know what to bring in, what to take out, stuff like that. It is obviously my what I would do against those decks. It's not going to be the same for everybody. And you could change the sideboard however you like or however. Yeah, obviously, if you're playing against a lot more of, say, like white versus or versus soul tie, then you're going to probably want more removal. If you were playing against a lot more soul tie, then you're going to probably want more counter spells, you know, so you could change it how you want. But this is kind of a universal sideboard. You kind of deal with a lot of stuff here. So I'll explain that at the end of the video. So stay tuned to the end of the video if you want to get see the cyborg guide but make sure to check the description of the video it has the deck list in there for both pc and mobile drop some comments down below hit that thumbs up hit that subscribe button notification and let's get into the matches okay let's go play some uh is it turns in this game is it turns Best animal in the world. The guy's name is best animal in the world. Um, that hand's pretty awful. So, well, not. That is equally, if not worse. Yeah, okay. Well, we're going to take another one. I guess we keep. We're going to bottom this and bottom that. Since we can't we keep five, I guess. Unfortunate that we had a multi five, but... Hey, you know, it is what it is. And what to tease, it is. Best animal in the world, huh? Quite the interesting name. Very interesting, my friend. Why do people draw interesting, interesting hands like this, huh? Alright, so they also mold again to five, so let's see what happens, you know? Because we're both to five. Let's see what we're playing against. Let's go best animal in the world. Okay. What the? That's an interesting land. Um, all right. So we're kind of... Let's see. Some green X deck. I'll grab blue. I want the four if I'm playing these. Oh, what the? Oh, what the? <laughs> At least we go balance the token. Um, that way... This doesn't get to attack necessarily. I mean, obviously, this can't kill this guy, but you know, we're both on a mulligan to five, so it's that kind of game. Girl aggro, huh? All right, so we're just gonna bounce this now, I guess. No reason to postponing the inevitable. Just get it off the board. That way he has to generate another way uh, to generate a 1-1. One, one. So that way this guy can attack. Oh, there's this other way to generate a 1-1. One, one. We'll just kill this now. No leaving that in play. 
none of that one ones, especially edge wall, because edge wall draws them cards. So none of that. Let's see if we could draw lands though. We can't draw lands. It's gonna be bad news. What you got, opponent? What you got? I'm surprised they mold so much. That deck usually, um, that deck usually can get away with easy molds. Looks like we're taking four at least. All right. It'd be nice if I hit a land, then I could drop this, and then that can drop this, and then I can drop this and this, but we'll see what happens. We might end up losing game one here. Especially if we don't hit land, they're hitting. Ugh, yep, this is looking bad. Unfortunate. Very, very uns... All right, we're not going to even bother. Don't even bother with that. All right, we're playing against Gruul, Chariot, Aggro, whatever you want to call them. All right. Soul Seer is a good one. Akron Wars to steal something's not bad. Actually, no. Soul Seer, Fire Prophecies, maybe. Let's kick that does two damage. Eh. So Mystical Disputes right off the bat. We don't need those in this matchup, so we're going to cut that. Don't want Prismari Command here either because it doesn't really kill very much other than their one cost abilities. So I'm going to cut that. Um, let's see, what else can we bring in? Fire Prophecy. I'm going to cut one discontinued, oh, not Center Clasm, for another Fire Prophecy. I think we're going to do it that way. Deck cannot have more than. Oh, that's right. It's a 61 card deck. Forgot. Completely forgot. All right, well, we brought in three Fire Prophecies then. It can pretty much kill a lot of their... Oh, actually, I should have... Instead of the instead of the Fire Prophecy, I should have kept the Prismari Command in because it could kill the Chariot. It could do two damage to a token and destroy Artifact. Oh, well. We'll do that for Game 3 because we got this. We got this. We got Game 2. Best animal in the world. Bring it. Bring on the challenge. Let's see what we could do. They're really going going in the sideboard here. I am playing some music that you guys can't hear, but it is good music. Good music. Alright. Game two. Here we go. We got this. That's unfortunate. We both multiple five. I mean, so there's not much. All right. I mean, I'm not going to mold to a five card hand again, like last time. So <laughs> I got something to play turn two, turn three, and then turn five. Yep. Let's go ahead and just kill this now. Then we can cast it to turn three, put this on red even drop faceless haven if we want instead that way we can do fable passage give us the three snows We've got a few different plays another one though Ooh, soul theory i'm gonna save for his five five here so i'm just gonna cast this because next turn we can soul seer the five five attack before cast the gold span hit him for eight then so he'll be down to eight because we hit him for 12. I'm going to probably most likely play Fable Passage here to grab a Snowland. So that way when I play this. Or actually I can play this. Well. Okay. Alrun's Epiphany. So if I play this, Alrun's Epiphany. Let's make it look like we have a counter spell. Let's make it. So I play the Faceless Haven first because it has summoning sickness. So there's no reason to play the uh, Fable Passage. Since if let's say we want to animate it next turn, if we played it the turn we you know want to animate it, obviously it has summoning sickness. Uh, Chariot. That's the one card we did not want to see though. Not the card we were looking for. All right, Bone Crusher is not too shabby. 
So we got two red. Let's go grab a blue source. Because we can put this one on red. So grab blue. Come on, opponent. I know you have chariot here, but come on. Oh, come on. All right, so grab blue. Play gold spin. We're going to take four, five, six, a minimum of seven. No, four. We're going to take a minimum of five. Uh, possibly more, depending on if they play something that can animate chariot or not, is the thing. If they can animate chariot with a creature they cast while taking four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But they're at 14. We play Outruns Epiphany, hit them for four. They go to 10. Hit them for six. They go to four. We go Bone Crusher them, take them down to two. And then we have the two on ones, four three, and a four four to try to win the game. It's highlighting Chariot, so I'm assuming he doesn't have something. Maybe he has something to remove the gold span, and he's just going to animate the, the Chariot here. So let's see what happens. Red, red. That's an interesting land. Art wise, not really anything other than the art. These ones are interesting too. Never seen this one. I mean, I don't play with basic. Um, I don't play with basics like that. Wow, he's not animating chariot. What is going on here? Ember Cleave. I still would have animated it. Yeah, we're not going to take that much damage. We're going to go ahead and kill this. Leave Ember Cleave there. Alright, so. Do, 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 do. I could do this. Great 2 mana. Alright, let's attack first, obviously. Let's play Outrun's Epiphany. Ooh, nice. All right. Um, we only need. Okay, let's go ahead and attack again. Create some more dudes. Then we can play this. Technically, we have what seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So five, eight, eleven. Technically, we can cast. Let's make sure we use these colorless sources, though. It's like, come on now. Come on now. Oh, wait, we would have won, right? No, uh, that was a punt. I didn't realize. I completely... My mind blanked on Faceless Haven. I like, whoa, what the heck is this? Put a 1-1 counter on target. You activate only at his sorceries. And only if you cast an instant sorcery spell. Um, Yeah. Okay, then this costs three to equip. Resolves. Targeting my, I could just sack it then. Four, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oops, can I do? I was like, hold on. Soulseer this. Get that out of here. You can animate chariot if you want, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, so I completely blanked on Faceless Haven here, unfortunately. Um, that's a lot, that's my bad. That is my bad. I do I rarely ever play with Faceless Haven. When I'm playing a manland that animates, I'm playing crawling burns. This is a rare moment where I'm playing uh, Faceless Haven. I just prefer Crawling Barons overall because I play mid-range slash control decks. And usually, most of the time, control decks. And so most of the time, I'm using my mana to uh, just play at instant speed. So if I don't do anything, I just throw it all into Crawling Barons. Throw it all into Crawling Barons. All right, 
No, what is this one lander stuff though? That the mulligan. Alright. Guess we bought him that. Oh, I don't know what this one lander stuff is always constantly happening, but I mean, okay. At least we have Maze Mind Tome. That way we could start scrying. Scrying. Okay, Frostbite was a nice draw. I'll take that one. I'll take that Frostbite. So, let's see. What are we doing next turn? If he doesn't play anything, we're just going to laugh. This is so interesting, though. It says, put a 1-1 one, one counter. Um, I'm going to scry here and see if I can hit an untapped source. Don't want that. That way I could use Frostbite. Darn. This way I was I would have been able to use Frostbite and use Maze Mind Tome to draw a card. But that didn't happen. So what do we do now? Do we just Frostbite this? And then play this. Would have loved to draw the land there. We could take a risk and draw, but that's way too greedy. Way, way too greedy. The problem here is it's a cast trigger, so even countering it would mean that he gets to draw a card. So just to be safe, I'm going to kill it. Like I said, I would have loved to draw on a card, but I guess we also get punted by doing that if he has a chariot in his hand. But then we could bounce one of the tokens. We could even bounce the chariot, I guess. It's going to have chariot. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna have chariot of course he's gonna have chariot uh just the way he drew it up all right um we need blue we have two blue actually they need a red it's like i have two blue sources i want to have double red so in case i draw um yeah land too Okay, in case I draw a gold span dragon. All right, what could he do? So put this on blue. I could cast this technically because it creates me an artifact. And then I could still lofty because this is considered a artifact as well. I could also use brazen because it says only it lets you use it for instance and sorceries. So technically, we have access to two mana right now. Tech, oh, two mana for these, I should say. Technically. The only bad part would be um, his chariot resolves. He's going to hit us for four, create a token, bounce it at end step. So that way, if he's trying to cast it again, we can counter it. So, but let's see what he does. The problem here is definitely the chariot. But like I said, if we can untap, wow. So what is this again? Uh, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature, activate only as a sorcery and only if you cast it at instant sorcery spell. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Might as well counter it. Unless he pays four. Keep Prismari in play for now. So then we could cast this, take an extra turn. If Prismari lives, we get to cast this next turn and take an extra turn. We are going to take minimum four, maybe five. Because he could put a counter on Chariot, I guess, since he cast it at instant. But I don't even know what he has. So he has another removal, and that would be, that would be really bad. That would be bad. Because then he can still do animate and create another two two. So the turn where I went and you know got ahead and killed the whoa. 
Well, okay, so I guess that's bad for us. All right, we're taking four. He's creating another token. Okay, uh, put one of them into your hand. One to the bottom, grab that one, play it. The bad part here is even if we bounce this, he just recasts it. Why does this stay on for how long? Why does that stay there permanently, it seems? So this is a weird card I don't see. Looks like we're taking six. We're going to brazen this back. Bounce this back. We don't have any board wipes in the deck, so it doesn't look like we're doing too well here. Let's crack this. Let's grab blue mana. Yeah, there's no like storm rats in the deck, so we're taking six. You got it. I'm gonna scry here to put it up to three. That way we could gain four. You know, fizzle the bone crusher the following turn. So let's scry. Gold span dragon. Sure. It's my way of winning, I guess. And then it's also taps for two mana. Okay. Um, there's no really point in bringing this down. So I'm just going to pass two, four, six, ten. So, let's see. The Great Hinge, sure. I think that might have costed him... Oh, he gained two life. Goes to 18. He has an edge wall in his hand as well. Nice. Nice job. Alright, let's see. So, he's at 18. How do I hit him for 4, hit him for 7, and then 14, 15, 16, 17, 18? That's the game. That is game, my friend. All right, so we're just gonna scry here because we need to keep the mana. Um, I guess that's fine. Right, okay, so let me see. So we're at 12, two, four, six. We're taking 10, right? We go to two. I'm gonna flash this in. If I play this, two, one, two, three, four, five. I guess we'll just leave it. I guess we technically need it. I think we win the game, though. What's the pause here for? Does he have a land in his hand or something? So we're going to flash this in. Hit him for seven. And then hit him for... Oh, this is you can only four tell it right now. Alright. So hit him for seven. And then we're gonna hit him for nine. And then we're gonna bone crush for him. So game. Wow. Got him got him down. Look at this. Good game opponent. We got him. We got him, boys. We got him. Wow. All right, let's play some is the churns. This is the churns version because we're playing discontinuity. Jorge Dominguez, right? I don't think it's George Dominguez. Jenga. What are we playing against that Jenga? All right, we're going to keep. I forgot what deck plays Jenga. Is it Naya, I think, right? I think it's Naya. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's Naya that plays Jenga. Okay, so far we are correct in our assumption. So far. 
I don't want to cycle this, but I may have to. So we're going to counter that. Because there's no reason not to counter that. I mean, I guess I'm going to cycle it to cast a turn four gold span. But that kind of sucks because this is a good card. I would prefer not to do it, but... We don't have anything else we can do with our hand. Yep, Naya. Let's hope they... Clarion Spirit, huh? Alright. There's only one of these in the deck also. So that's kind of... Kind of crummy. Trying to think, is it worth it? Or should I just take the damage? Alright, we're just going to pass. Nice, that was a good draw. Let's kill this. And I did it during my turn, just so that they can't, like, multiple spell on their turn. And they only had green, so unless they had the snake skin, uh, whatever it's called, it wouldn't have mattered. Edge roll. Sure. Bone Crusher, yep. Yep, Naya Adventures. All right. That's my turn. Ooh, nice, 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 nice. I'd like to see that. I mean, the only bad part about it, I can't play it right now, but if I had the uh, Thrax guy, it would have been nice. Let's hope he doesn't have the Giant Killer guy. He has it. He's highlighting my dude. No! Dang, if I would have had, say, two more mana, then I could have discontinued that. That would have been awesome. Then he's going to cast it, draws a card. Yep. All right, so the game plan here is two, four, five, six, seven. That would be eight. All right, Naya. Another gold span would be awesome. Not another gold span. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, we're just going to use this to tap and create a 4-4. Retreat. I could technically end his turn so he doesn't get that. But then well, how does that help me is the question. How does that help me? This requires two in itself. I'm trying to think, is there a way... All right, that resolves. Ugh, Fable Passage. Of all the lands, <laughs> it had to be Fable Passage, huh? That's disgusting. Oh, that was disgusting. So let him attack. He's going to crack the land. All right, go ahead. I don't think he's attacking, obviously, with these because I have Faceless Haven. So we're going to take the damage here. All right. Faceless Haven was like, I mean, that was like the worst card to see. All right. So four damage. We can do two and two. So that way, if he cracks this, no, we can't do that. So we do two and two. He cracks that. Makes these into three. three. This makes it the three, three. So we do two here. Actually, we need to do three here, force him to crack and keep the edge wall and put the counters on it. Yeah, let's do that. Submit, do the damage here, tap two permanents. So we could tap. Let's tap this. And. I guess tap this. So we're going to do three here, one there, force him to crack the Fable Passage now. See what he does. Because he can only get up to three toughness here with the retreat. If I could draw, and then if I draw untapped land, yep, you got it. Anticipated that. Okay. Hal runs Epiphany. I was looking for an untapped land. 
but okay. One, two, three, four, five. Can only generate three mana if I play gold span, so that doesn't work. If it would have drew an untapped source, man. Can I cast gold span and and live is the question. Because he has me 5, 8, 9, 10, plays any land. Kind of sucks. I could also do this. Look for a land. All right, let's try this one first. Wow, we didn't hit a land off that either? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, dang, that sucks. Put this one to my hand. Put this to the bottom. That was so unfortunate. What could he play here that is holding up a pause? Do they have a protection spell? That was super unfortunate. The top four cards was no lands. Five, eight, let's say nine, ten. I guess we can't attack. Well, I guess I should have just gone for this then, huh? Showdown is called, sure. Okay. Well, he doesn't. Oh, yeah, he has green. What am I saying? <laughs> I was like, what am I saying? He has a green right there. Puts a counter on both creatures. I could block the 4-4, take 6. But I'm not winning the game this way. So, 6. That's 10. Do they have Bone Crusher? They do have red. <laughs> I mean, these creatures have Vigilance, I guess. So, we're just going to block. All right, we need a land. We need a land. I need an untapped land. There we go. That should have been, if that was there, the turn before would have been nice. Okay, let's take the extra turn. So two, four, five, and then we get one, two, three four five not enough yet so we have to do this one more time hit you for two another gold span dragon huh i think we hit him for four end his churn i think we just end his churn Okay, so hit him for four again, do the same thing, and win the game. Got him, boys. Got him. Got him, boys. <laughs> we got him, boys. We got him. Take four extra turns in a row, baby. We got him. Okay. Let's see. That's hilarious. So this is technically good and technically not. So Mystical Disputes, I'm going to cut because he's a Naya. I don't really care for that. Man, I can't believe we didn't hit a single land. We drew no land and then we iteration to no land. That's four cards, man. That was four cards. So Showdown, Retreat. Okay, so I think I want one Center Clasm, Soul Seer, Fire Prophecy. Ooh, wait, too many cards. Um, I think I could cut one Lofty Denial here for that reason. Maybe, maybe I just remove all my counter magic stuff and just go more. I 
and go more aggressive against them in a sense. Cron War can take something from theirs. If it gets too big, we can steal it. All right, I think I'm just going to do that. All right, let's run it. Run it back. Jorge Dominguez. We, we stole one from you, but technically we didn't because we missed the land. We would have had that much sooner. Much, much sooner. All right. Um, I guess I keep because I could turn two brazen, turn three iteration. I'm listening to uh, some Will Smith right now. The old school Will Smith. All right. That's a decent draw. Turn two, turn three, turn four, turn five. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right. We're just going to bounce this now just to force him to recast it. Because we're doing this next turn anyways. And if we hit a frostbite, we can kill it as well. Yep. Yep. Then we're going to do that regardless. So nothing like, man, what's up with all the, now we're drawing all the lands. Come on. <laughs> now we're drawing all the lands. Holy moly. Look at this. We're not winning again with this hand. We have to cast this into this, take an extra turn. We might be able to pull it off. We'll see. It's gonna be a close one. Adds Jenga to his hand. Or Jenga or Jenga, whatever you want to call his name. Cast the Prismati Dragon! Prismati! Edge wall. Giant killer. Nice. The one one flyers is kind of annoying. See, so he has a uh, left strip. Play this, I guess, play gold spend dragon. Swing out. So we have access to four mana currently. Four mana. He didn't block. Interesting. So he's going to have what? He's going to have to keep two mana. So two, four, six mana, right? So he's gonna, he has access to four mana here. Because he's going to keep using... Oh, wow. Just concedes. I guess he couldn't stop it. All right. Let's uh keep this ball rolling. Is it... I didn't know you could do this. While dra oh, it says while drafting, you can hold the alt key. I don't mean I don't draft because I really am very, very bad at limited. But um, I did not know you could do that. So good to know if I... I mean, I have these draft tokens, but good to know. Afriano. Oh my gosh, my deck loves to draw no lands. Look at this. Look at this. Let's take that mulligan. All right, so we keep this... We have no idea what our opponent is technically playing, so I'm going to take a risk and bottom the Mystical Dispute, I guess. I twitch. So we're playing against Rectos. Rectos. Well, these are going to kind of help-ish. Yep, Rectos. Another I twitch iteration another frostbite um just to be safe let's put this on red and hold up lofty just to be safe i don't know what they can do but it doesn't hurt to just be safe better be safe than sorry as they say because they might have like a bastion remembrance remembrance or whatever it's called bastion and we're only taking two damage per turn that's fine See, speaking of, there it is. And there it is. All right, well, <laughs> we, we're going to need to draw some lands. Otherwise, this is not going to go well. You got it. We're going to need to draw some lands, please. Another Bastion. Can't counter this one because he has, you know, but... All right, I'm not going to frostbite it either here because then he could play village rights. So now I could frostbite it and hold up village rights. Oh, no, I can't do it now, but um, 
We're just going to take three here, I guess. All right. Nice, nice, nice. We're going to take three again, once again. And just keep taking the damage. This is going to cost us five mana. You got it, opponent. Hope they don't have a Heartless Act. That's what we're going to die to, I guess. If he has a Heartless Act, that's going to suck. Because uh, then this guy dies. Let's hope for the best. It looks like he has like a Village Rights or Plum. I think he has a Plum in his hand. There's Because there's a pause here, so he could do something. Don't have Heartless Act. Yes. So we could keep an upkeep stop here. Let's attack for four. Actually, I don't even have to technically do that. I'm just going to let him do whatever he wants to do. This costs five, and we could cast it. Sure. You got it. So I'm going to flash this in and hold up Lofty. At end step was what I mean. Village rights. So we can end the churn here. And then it takes everything off the stack. Is it worth it? All right, we're going to do it. I'm just going to try and end the stack here. It looks like he has something he could do. Because there's a pause here. So he has another sack outlet. Guess not. All right. Ends the turn. Let's go back to combat again. Little nifty trick there, eh, opponent? We need one more. We have five, six. All right. You're up, opponent. So let's see. He's at 12. Two, five, we're kind of far away from this. So I might cycle this just so I can have access to additional land. Okay. So that one resolves. That one resolves. Yep, what are you going to get? What are you going to get, opponent? And then what are you going to get with this one? Okay, and then we're going to lofty this. So they have to pay four. They don't have access to four. So the question is, do I flash this in, hit him for seven? Cruxa, that's fine. I mean, I take another damage here, but that's fine. Because it's going to sack it. So discard that. Resolves. Yep. Resolves. All right, let's go ahead and uh, flash this in. Oh my gosh, thank you. Oh no, we can't do that. Cost six, we have five mana. We have five mana. Oh, we know he has that. We get him for seven here. Attack you for seven. I think I have to not do that. Uh, the problem here, I guess. So I don't think he has anything with haste. The problem here is going to be if he has plum. If he has plum, we're dead. So I guess if you have it, opponent, you have it. So there's nothing I can do about that. If you have Plum, we're dead. Because he's going to create... No, we're not dead, right? Plum only gives Sax 2. So we'll be alive, actually. We'll take 2 damage. We'll go to 1. You got it. Plum will take us to 1. You got it. You're going to do the second one now? If you do the second one, you lose the game. Bastion of Remembrance. Okay, well, we won the game, I guess. 
So go ahead and create the treasure just to be safe. Draw. Go ahead and play the next turn. Combat! Take the extra turn. Combat! All right, we got game one. Got game uno. So Rakdos sack. Rakdos Sacarino. All right, so what do we want to do against them? Cinderclasm is great against them. Uh, mystical disputes are eh, eh. I wish I had another Cinderclasm in this matchup. May have to put a second Cinderclasm into the sideboard here. Um, hmm. Does this exile under? Nope. Okay. Um, Soul Seer does it does Soul Seer and Fire Prophecy kind of do the same thing in a sense here. So Fire Prophecy. I guess that if I had another center clasm, I would easily just put that in, but I don't. So maybe I need to put two center clasms. But then again, I don't think I play against this deck very often. So I'm not really that's why there's only one in there, because it's mainly against the white decks. Um, but you know, also red, I guess, but We'll keep. We have a turn two or turn two. Maze Mind Tome also. Those extra turns, baby. That's been doing some work. Cruxa. All right, what do we get rid of here? What do we get rid of? I think I get rid of maybe Iteration because I could play Maze Mind Tome. I need the lands. I need these. So we'll do that. Frostbite, play Maze Mind Tome. Maze Mind Tome will draw his cards. Now we can play Frostbite for two damage and use Maze Mind Tome to draw a card. And then set up for this. You can probably play Bastion. Yep. So we're not going to use Maze Mind Tome here because we don't need to in a sense. So I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Um, I think I am going to kill this just so he can't sack it for village rights or... Um, Plum, and then I still have the mana I can use to draw a card off Maze Mind Tome. But I am going to keep an upkeep stop here so I can try to hit land number four. Crux, uh, darn. I guess I discard Brazen. Actually, let me draw a card first. Oh, see, so, see he has village rights. He has the village rights. All right, let's just draw and see what we hit. Right. Submit this one, I guess. Oh, he didn't use it. All right, we need to draw land. Ah, that's technically possibly a land. Can't pass it up. Looks at three cards. So one to hand. I could take, actually, I should take these two, put that to the bottom. Grab that to hand, this to the bottom, put that there. Play this. Let's foretell this. Then we get to uh, play Faceless Haven. We can, either we can flash this in so these become cheaper. Or this one becomes cheaper, I should say. Rolling Vortex. What? Why? I'm not playing anything for free. That's odd. How many cards does he have in the graveyard? Alright, so maybe I'm just going to cast Goldspend Dragon here, actually. Especially now that I drew that. Definitely. So you have another plum or something? Because what's the holdup? Oh, because the life gain. I see. I see. It's the life gain trigger because it costs one mana to uh, prevent the life gain. So cast this, play this. Attack. We'll have six treasures here. Yep. As long as Goldspan lives, that is. I'm surprised he brought this in. That's good against Soul Tie because of Emergent Ultimatum. Not against my deck. Everything I play costs mana. So that's odd. I'm not understanding that. I guess he just wants the extra damage because he's playing Bastion. Let's 
Okay. I guess he just wants to tap out, so that way it doesn't stop it stops asking him. You gotta do it again, then. Gots to do it again, opponent. Alright. So, one, two, three... Four, cast Prismari Dragon. Prismari! Let's go to combat. I think that's game, right? That should be game. It takes four. He goes to 12. You upon each point loses and you gain one. So you could gain, so you can go up to 13, right? We hit him for seven, eight. We hit him for seven. That's not game, I guess. Seven, eight, nine. It's not game. All right. And then even if we do this, that's 11. So it's not game. I'm just going to pass. Oh, I guess him taking the churn would no, because he goes up 13. Because he can uh, sack this. Money. Money in the power. Uh, that seems counterable. That seems counterable since it has hate, uh, flying. Don't think I want to let you have that. That doesn't look like something I would like you to have. Attack with the O1. Attack with the O1. <laughs> Attack with the O1. Alright, let's flash this guy in. Good game, opponent. Good game. Is it flash extra turns? Combat. Attack. Take 8, 11. You can sack, you gain a life, but then you just lose to vo rolling vortex on your own turn. Sure. Good game, opponent. Nicely done. Yeah, rolling vortex, I would not bring in. If, you, if you're watching my match after, you know, I would not bring in rolling vortex against this deck. Let's take the extra turn and win the game. Good game, opponent. Village rights. Okay, we'll counter village rights. Take one. Combat. I'm gonna hit him for more damage by animating. Oh, we can't even animate faceless haven. Never mind. All right, let us go see one last match for the is it Paul? Is it turns? Let's see if we can pull another pull another one out the hat. Last one for is it turns? Then we gotta go try another deck. No, we're against a Yorion deck. All right, um, it's not great, but. It's not bad either, I guess. Sucks we're against Soul Tie Ultimatum, but hey, we get to test it out and see. Apparently, this deck, well, the is it Dragon Snow deck, whatever, is supposedly good against this deck. So let's find out. We get to play a turn two Maze Mind Tome. Okay, that was a land is I did need, and the fact that they don't have if I cast this, they don't have wait what? Oh, we're playing against uh, Doom Foretold. As for Doom, so not exactly what I thought. Okay, we're playing against Esper Doom, so the only thing I could think of that would be would maybe be a Doom Scar. Doom Scar. Well, what the heck are we playing against? What are we playing against? Is this like Esper Mill? <laughs> I'm completely confused. Well, we're going to kill it. I am so lost right now. What the heck are we playing against, people? What are we playing against? 
Esper Mill? Or, yeah, like, what? You got us, opponent. I have... I, <laughs> I really have no idea what you're playing. Let's put an upkeep stop just to be safe. Behold. Okay. What is that in the deck for, though? You're throwing me off. You're throwing me completely off. Okay, we don't need the upkeep stop now, Drill. We do not need upkeep stop anymore. Let us foretell this and pass turn. Hopefully he taps out so we can just drop gold's G span. Actually, we're going to flash in Thrax over gold span, I think. I mean, he could just be playing a but that could be counter spell too, so I don't even know. You really don't know what your opponent is playing when. Okay, he's cracking this during his end step. What does that mean? Another behold, sure. Another behold multiverse. One top, one bottom. He's going to foretell another card. Looks like it. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. so I think we play gold span dragon here since he only has one blue, just cast the gold span since he can't counter it. Hit him for four, and then next turn we can flash. I mean, I do want to flash these guys in, but he had a blue up. So he could have easily have just had a mystical dispute. And there's the green mana. This is four color doom. Four color randomness. Extinction event. Sure. You got it. You got it. All right. So... Flash that in. Play Pazmari Dragon. That gives me the token. I can still use Maze Mind Tome. I think I flash this in, to be honest. And just pretend like I'm holding up counter spells here. Might have a third Behold, it looks like, maybe. Because if I flash this in, I get to hit him for four, play this. That would then be another 6, so that's 10. Do 2 damage and do 4 damage, that would be 16 total. So yeah, Al runs Epiphany. I'm really curious what you're playing, opponent. I really want to know. This is, the, this is a spicy meatball. You got a spicy meatball in my on your hands here. Is this the solid coming finally? There it is. There's the solid coming. Alright, draw. So I think we're going to play Prismari now since we drew solid coming. Because now we could counter his uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, da, 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 da. So... I can foretell this and then just pass turn, I guess. You're up. Now we have Alrun's Epiphany and Saw It Coming at the ready. And we could just technically tap these for Saw It Coming. So that's good. Binding of the Old Gods. Could counter this. Sure. Let's try countering this. Let's see if he has another counter spell of his own. No, he does not. He does not have a counter spell. So, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have access to nine mana. So, six, nine. I think I'm just going to attack here, flash in the Thrax, and then be able to do the rest of the stuff. Because I need to throw another body out there before I take an extra turn is the thing. So let's flash this guy in. 
If he tries to counter it, we'll counter his counter essence scatter. Let's try and see if we can counter this. See if this resolves. See if we get Thrax, the sudden storm. If he doesn't kill it, we have Elrond, oh, so Vanishing Verse. Okay. So now we'll take the extra turn. Because if he would he would have had another if he had another counter spell, he would have used it against the solid coming. So put this on that. Go to combat. Attack. Let's play. So tap this for mana. Blue. Not sacrifice. Blue. Actually, hold on. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven, eight, nine, ten. Six, nine. Okay. So this is five. Let's cast this as a creature and see if we can win. Seven, eight, nine. This would be lethal. All right, let's see. Attack you. What do you got? Shark Typhoon. Let's hold full control. Resolves. All right, so we're going to do four damage here, submit, and then we're going to tap and tap, submit, pay, resolves, win the game. Okay. Got him. Got him game one. So it's like Esper with the green splash, so it's four colors, but the green splash, I'm assuming, is just for Binding of the Gods. But this is the <laughs> that's the card that I'm just like, what? What is that? Alright. Um do I, I'm like, do I want to bring in oxes because he's playing crab? This is so confusing. How do you play against a deck like that when you have the most random cards in the you know? I guess I'm just gonna Take a chance, take out the frostbites, put in the oxes. Um, let's see. I guess we do a uh, disdainful stroke and one test of talents, maybe. Let's see. If I lose to the crab, I'm gonna be so mad for taking out the frostbites. All right, we're going to run it. We're going to run it. Let's see, Paul. Paul, my man, if you end up watching this video, I'm curious to see your deck because that crab, my dude, that crab, that got me confused completely. I guess I got to keep. I got three lands. That crab has me confused completely, though. Just don't know what to expect. Go grab blue mana. Okay, put this down. I guess we're just going to go for ahead and foretell this now. Let's just see what happens. Cultivate. Well, I wish I wouldn't have uh, foretold that now, huh? Could have countered this. Now he's playing ramp in the deck as well. All right, so I think I need to put this on red for gold span dragon. So we're gonna do that. And then, oh, if I would have put it on blue though, I could have flashed this guy in. That was a mistake. I should have done it that way. All right, let's do this. I should have done it on uh, the blue, so I could flash this guy in. Then it gives me lofty denial. Negate, sure. All right. Well, let's see if you have a. Uh, see if you have essence, essence scatter. Yep, it looks like you have it. Mystical dispute. Same difference. Same difference. If I, I guess if I were to stop the cultivate man, we would have been in good shape because he didn't have the blue mana otherwise. Omen. 
are you playing Soul Tie Ultimatum and you're just playing the crab? Am I playing against Soul Tie Ultimatum with the crab in the deck? But there was white mana, so no, that doesn't make sense. There was white mana in the deck. White, black, blue. See, white mana. Green. White, black, blue, green. So he's missing... Ugh. I literally can't play a card. Wow. Um, he's playing a four color. Yeah, he's missing red to be five colors. So add a color resolves. Guess we get to go grab blue now. Um, do I take the risk and? And flash in Thrax, or should I flash in Brazen here too? Nah, that's fine. We'll flash this in at end step anyways. I was debating on this. This is the real only debate I had there was to see if I wanted to flash that in. All right, let's flash this guy in. Guess, do you have a kill spell? Ugh, ox, oxy boy. I guess it would have been a frostbite. I'm looking for mana. Come on, deck. Shark typhoon. Yep. Sharky boy. Looks like uh, we might lose this one to uh, mana here. Mana is an issue here. If you play the Yorio and I'm countering it. Okay, there we go. Can't attack, so I'm just going to pass, I guess. He has access to 8, maybe 9. What? See, this is what I mean. This is so odd. What is this crab in the deck for? He left it in too. What is this crab doing? What's the purpose of this crab, I should say? Alright, let's try flashing this in. He has three unknowns. Alright, so now my stuff is uncounterable. My cards are uncounterable, or my, I should say my high cost cards are uncounterable. This is uncounterable. I hope he doesn't realize Sudden Storm's ability, but I guess he does. Never mind. Can't attack. I just wanted to do that for the extra turn. So let's sack this, grab a... Um blue here and then it's brazen that all right uh yeah let's brazen that i guess let's yep let's bounce this back to your hand Let's go to. Uh, we're gonna cast the gold span, I guess, because it's gun counterable. Sure. If he has a shark typhoon, that would suck. If he has another shark typhoon in his hand. But this is uncounterable. And we're just gonna go to combat and swing out. Extinction event is also bad, I guess. We have odd. Odd, odd. But we have the two tokens are even, and we have a gold span dragon that if you draw one more land, then you could use gold span. Actually, with this cost two mana regardless. Three, six, seven. Yeah, never mind. So we might just win off the bat of this gold span dragon then. And he sacked the omen, so now Yorion is not blinking anything. So that's good. But yeah, Paul, if you end up watching this match. Let me know what the crab is for. So there's an extinction event, I'm assuming. That has to be extinction event. He left two to the top. 
Ashiok. That's fine. That does not stop us from killing him. Bounce that. Nope. And then extinction event, second main phase, you also lose crab though. And then I can, I, yeah, it's game. I play Ghost Band and win the game. Good game. That was odd. Hey everyone, hopefully, welcome to the Cyborg Guide. Hopefully you guys enjoyed your the video so far, both the intro and the gameplay. Um, we are at the portion, since this is a best of three deck, we are at the portion where I give you a Cyborg Guide according to how I sideboard against the meta decks. Obviously, everyone sideboards differently, and your side deck may end up not being exactly the same here, but this is how I sideboard against the decks that I, we, the meta decks that we play, or I play, or you play, whatever, you know? So, start off, the first one is Rogues. Of course, you're going to see Rogues. Um, you may not see it as much. Um, I don't know. You may see it a lot. But the first thing we're going to bring in is we're going to bring in two ox and two fire prophecies. So ox, obviously, because you want to use it to escape your graveyard, you know, for two mana, escaping eight cards out of your graveyard. It's very good against rogues, takes your graveyard down. So the adrenaline lock and into the story become useless. On top of that, it also makes the rogue creatures less power since if you have more cards, they get a boost. The fire prophecy is there because it kills both crab and I believe it's soaring thought thief, the one three flyer guy. Um, so it does three damage, so it kills any of their creatures. Although it is two mana versus one mana with like frostbite, I think it's very kind of it's necessary so you can get the crab, especially the crab, get the crab off the board as soon as possible. Cards I take out is one magma opas because you're usually discarding this, so you're going to feed your own graveyard to create a treasure. Um, creating a treasure obviously is great because you get to cast like, like discontinued Aaron's Epiphany and then the, the you know the dragons and flyers sooner, which is good. But we don't want to be feeding our graveyard. Cards I take out is one frostbite. Sorry about that one frostbite and one bone crusher and the reason why frostbite and bone crusher is because they only do two damage unless you have three snowlands it's going to do so the first frostbite most likely is going to do two damage so i do cut one and bone crusher only is going to do two damage i want to keep in some i want to keep threats in so that's why i didn't take out two bone crushers instead of you know say and leave the frostbites in. I still want to keep in creatures to keep pressure on them. So I cut a 1 1 for two fire prophecies. And as you can see, um, it's bringing in four cards and we're taking out three. So we're making our deck into a 61 card. I know people asked me in the past, like, well, you're bringing in more cards than you're taking out. Well, against rogues in a 60 card deck, I usually take my deck size up to 61. It doesn't affect usually, I mean, the percent, it's like 0.0000001% that it affects your deck to move the size count up. Same thing as when you're cracking a land, technically. It, it's a very, very minimal percentage that it changes your deck that it, sh it won't really, I mean, gameplay-wise, it shouldn't affect your deck. So I usually take it up to 61. Having that extra one-card buffer is usually sometimes worth it. So that way, you know, it, it, it's harder, I guess, to, technically one card harder to mill you for 61 cards than 60. It's my peripheral, personal preference where I like to take it up to 61 versus 60 against rogues. Obviously, I don't do this against in the Yorion deck where it's 80 cards, but in a 60 card deck, I intend up to take it up to 61. The next deck we're going to have a sideboard guide here too is the white. So I know there's white, you know, aggro, and then there's like white life gain. So this is for both of them. I don't know which one, you know, you're usually going to play or not. But so I bring in three fire prophecies, one soul seer and two center clasms. So the fire prophecies, obviously fire prophecies, soul seer and center clasms, all removal. We need to remove their creatures before they can put too much pressure on us. The good thing about soul seer is they, it destroys indestructibility. So it goes around soul for savior. Cinderclasm, they run a lot of one cost. They run, what is it? Selfless Savior, Elsid. Um, they also run the other creature, the uh, the one that has 1-1, one, one, gains life. And then when you have like 27 life or something, you create a 4-4 four, four angel. I'm just like 
blanking on his name but so center cosm can hit a lot of their creatures for two mana that's pretty good or three mana do two damage so we're bringing in removal um against them and then against them i cut i just cut out the removal i mean i cut out not the removal i bring in removal and i cut out the counter spells they're a low to the curve deck usually the white decks are usually playing lurus as their companion um sometimes i mean there's also they're starting to i guess maybe move away from it because they're running the god but either way the curve is like three and under so having mystical dispute for right off the bat obviously is bad because they're a white deck so it's not a one mana counter spell lofty denial they can usually pay the one unless you have the fire so mm, so not really eh, what you're looking for and then saw it coming i take one out because like i said i'm just cutting uh, counter spells counter spells is not really good against an aggro deck if they have something in play already that's beating you down and you draw a counter spell it's not going to help you out so you want to be against an aggro deck you want to be proactive than reactive so that's why we are taking out counter spells instead of being re uh what's it called reactive we went into a proactive game state um so that way we could just constantly you know tap out destroy tap out destroy tap out destroy rather than just sit there hoping they play something so we could counter it so that's how i, I sideboard against the white slash life gain deck and like i said so the winota red deck is a little different because we are bringing in red cap melees against them versus the white deck a red cap doesn't do anything because then we have to sacrifice the land so the only difference between the white deck and the red slash Winota is we are bringing in three red cap melees. And then what we're taking out here is the additional uh, one additional solid coming one magma opus and one iteration. And like I said, the same same concept. We want to be proactive rather than reactive. So we take out the counter spells, bring in all the removal spells, and we that's how we want to play against these red and Winota decks. And red cap melee is very good against these red and Winota decks because it's a one mana do four damage creature. And obviously, like I said, it wasn't good against the white deck just because if we don't do the damage to a red card, we have to sacrifice the land. So that's the only difference between that deck and these two decks is the red cap melee. But the same concept is here. You bring in removal and you take out counter spells because you don't want to be sitting on counter spells when they already have one to two creatures that is just beating your face down. So we want to be more proactive rather than reactive against it. The next and final deck that um, I'm going to be giving the cyborg guy to is ultimatum. So we already have a pretty decent, I guess, not, you know, deck against the um, ultimatum just because we have, a, a, you know, what is this? Seven, seven counter spells. So that right off the bat is already good against them. On top of that, we have five extra turns and discontinuity technically could count as a counter spell because when they play a card, you could respond with discontinuity and it ends the stack so the card they played it fizzles out it just removes it off the stack so it doesn't resolve and then it ends their turn so we already have a decent amount against soul tile tomato this is why we don't have too much in the cyborg against them so what i bring in is two strokes two test of talents and i take out four frost bites so i'm bringing in counter spells against their ramp cards their draw powers you know their emergent ultimatum and then i'm taking out cards like frostbite because they run no creatures or they they will have like elder gargaroth or something like that but that requires two frostbites with three snow lands in play snow lands in play won't be hard but two frostbites to kill one card not a good trade-off they don't have that many creatures they're probably going to have an average of maybe three four creatures in their deck so i'm not going to keep the creature package in i'm just going to bring in counter magic and be able to react to um their cards at certain times we definitely and, it, and it's very good with gold span and prismari these two mana cards because uh prismari if you have one more obviously if you need you need another artifact but if, if you have maze mind tome and you cast prismari you're able to use these two mana counter spells and then obviously gold span you just attack or and it gets you the treasure and then these two mana counter spells work pretty well so that's what we do against ultimatum is we bring in counter spells and remove the four frostbites and so yep that is the cyborg guide against those decks. Um, there's going to be some fringe decks you'll see here and there. Um, 
but like I said, like the Magecraft deck, you'll see here kind of there. Um, you might see the, what is it, the Rakdos Sacrifice, you know? So like against those, I mean, like the Magecraft deck, I would bring in like Fire Prophecies, maybe. Cinderclasm is very good against the Magecraft deck because they're going to be creating a bunch of 1-1s. So Cinderclasm would be great against that matchup. So I'd bring those in. Um, like I said, you know, Fire Prophecies um, would be not bad because you get to destroy the Segmore, I believe it is Segmore Witch or something like that. So that's what I would bring in some stuff like that. Maybe cards I would take out would be probably like Mystical Dispute, um, either something like maybe saw one one or two Solid Comings or Lofty Denial stuff like that. And then against there's another you know you might see like a Mardu deck or Rakdos you know against Rakdos or Mardu I don't know they're kind of different. But if they're the Magecraft deck with uh, Bastion you know Cinder Clasm. Once again, it's going to be great. Um, oxes are good against the Rakdos, you know, um, deck because they're going to be making you kind of discard your hand a little bit. So refilling your hand for cheap is pretty decent. Solcer is very good against the Predator guy because it removes his indestructibility. But yeah, so those are the, some of the decks you might see and some of the cards you could bring in against those. But for the most part, the Cyborg guy was given for the most popular decks of this week and a little you know this week and past week so those what you're going to see you might see some fringe decks but those were the decks that i wanted to give you a cyborg guide to hopefully you guys enjoyed the content the video the gameplay the cyborg guide if you're new and by the time you know if you've enjoyed all this hit that thumbs up hit that subscribe button um appreciate it always check the description of the video there is the deck list for both pc and mobile um drop some comments down below how you like this deck this ch the change to the is it snow deck adding thrax because it makes all your five costs and higher uncounterable and adding you know discontinuity to take those extra turns slash removal spell slash um counter spell slash everything i really like this card um, instant speed ending the turn is very key or not key but very clutch obviously outruns epiphany is amazing it creates you two one ones and it can also be played at six mana you have to foretell it but this is an automatic six mana no foretelling and it ends the turn at instant speed there might be times where you know you need to do end it at instant speed versus rather than play at sorcery speed you know because you, you never know so I do like discontinuity, so, um, but yeah, drop some comments down below, check the description for the video, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.